Hey guys, how's it going? Mr Mitchell here. In this video we're going to look at electrical charge, so let's get started. The first thing to point out is that there are two types of electrical charge, positive and negative, and different things happen when you have positive and negative charges interacting with each other. So you should know that opposite charges attract each other, so if you were to bring a positive charge and a negative charge near each other, they will actually want to come together, they will want to be attracted to each other. But if you have two like charges, like two positive charges near each other, or two negative charges near each other, then these will want to repel each other and get away from each other. And it's this attraction and repulsion of charge that helps us understand why electrons move in the direction that they do in a circuit. The next thing we need to be aware of is that charge can be either static, i.e. stationary, or moving. And most of what we talk about in the electricity topic will involve moving charges, i.e. electrons, rather than static electricity, but we will be talking about static briefly just now. So what we mean by static charge or static electricity is where we have charge building up on the surface of of an object rather than charge moving in a circuit. Some examples demonstrating electrostatic charge include charging a plastic rod by rubbing it with a cloth and using it to pick up pieces of paper or deflect a gentle stream of water from a tap. You might also rub a balloon on a jumper or your hair and stick it to a hair or a wall. And just to show you a simulation of this, you see if we start off with a balloon with some charge on it and a jumper with some charge on it, if we bring the balloon over towards the jumper and rub the jumper with it, you'll see that the surface of the balloon starts to collect and build up the negative charges from the jumper. And this leaves behind a positive charge on the jumper. So because we've now got a net negative charge on the balloon's surface and a net positive charge on the jumper, then if I let the balloon go, you'll notice that it attracts towards the positively charged jumper. And that's because, remember we said, positive and negative charges will attract each other, opposite charges attract. We can also make the charged balloon stick to the wall, and to see this, if I take the balloon and move it near the wall, you can see that the negative charges on the balloon's surface are actually repelling away the negative charges on the wall surface. And this means the negative charges on the balloon surface are attracted towards the positive charges in the wall and this means they're going to attract each other so the balloon can attach to the wall. Another classic example of demonstrating static electricity is using a Van de Graaff generator, which can make your hair stand up, but it can also be used to show how lightning works and create sparks. So these are some experiments that you can try yourself to get to grips with electrostatic charge. Since we talked briefly about moving charges and the fact that moving charges, i.e. electrons, are going to be the things moving in our circuits, then it's worth talking about the model of the atom at this stage. And remember we've looked at the atom already in the radiation topic, so this should act as a bit of a recap. So remember first of all that protons are positively charged, electrons are negatively charged, and neutrons are neutral. It then says the nucleus is made up of protons and neutrons bound together. So if we look at our picture of the atom here, remember we have the nucleus in the middle which is composed of the neutrons and protons bound together, and it then says electrons occupy particular orbits around the nucleus which represent different energy levels. So you'll notice these different orbits of the electrons around the nucleus of the atom, and we're saying that these will represent different energy levels. So just to show you a quick simulation of this, if this was our nucleus in the middle with protons and neutrons bound together, then without drawing the orbitals you can see the electrons are moving around in different patterns there. So some are coming out pretty far away from the nucleus, and some are staying quite close to the nucleus, and that just depends on their energy level. And it's also worth pointing out that these electrons, when they're free electrons, are the things that are moving in the wires and circuits. So these are the electrons that create something called a current in our electrical circuits. So this basically underpins everything we're about to look at in the electricity topic. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching, if you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.